Why Nestle is one of the most hated companies in the world. Child labor. Unethical promotion. Manipulating uneducated mothers. Pollution. Price fixing and mislabeling. Those are not words you want to see associated with your company. Nestle is the world's largest foodstuff company, and it has a history that would make even hardcore industrialists shiver. We're gonna look at why Nestle has such a bad reputation and whether or not it deserves it. People love to hate, and they really love to hate on big companies, whether or not they have a reason to. Companies, big companies included, are the very backbone of our economy, and they often get a bad representative for little or no reason. But sometimes there is a reason, or as in this case, several solid reasons, as we'll see below. Nestle is a Swiss multinational food and beverage company. According to Wikipedia, their products include baby food, bottled water, breakfast cereals, coffee and tea, confectionery, dairy products, ice cream, frozen food, pet foods, and snacks. They have 447 factories across 194 countries and employ around 333,000 people. They truly are what you would call a giant. Looking at only these stats, it would seem that Nestle is one of the good guys. But then why are they so hated? Let's take it step by step. The Baby Formula Nestle aggressively pushed their breastfeeding formula in less economically developed countries, specifically targeting the poor. They made it seem that their infant formula was almost as good as a mother's milk, which is highly unethical for several reasons. The first problem was the need for water sanitation. Most of the groups they were targeting, especially in Africa, didn't have access to clean water. Many don't to this day. So it was necessary for them to boil the water. But due to low literacy rates, many mothers were not aware of this, so they mixed the formula with polluted water which put the children at great risks. Nestle seems to have knowingly ignored this and encouraged mothers to use the formula even when they knew the risks. Breastfeeding, one of the most important aspects for an infant, especially in unsanitized areas, was cast aside. Baby formula was the nearest thing in the world, and this splendid triumph of care and science is, so like mother's milk that the tiny stomach won't notice the difference. But the tiny stomach did notice the difference. Many mothers were able to read in their native language but were still unable to read the language in which sterilization directions were written. Even if mothers understood the need to boil the water, they might not have had the facilities to do so. UNICEF estimates that a formula-fed child living in disease-ridden and unhygienic conditions is between 6 and 25 times more likely to die of diarrhea and 4 times more likely to die of pneumonia than a breastfed child. Another problem was that mothers tended to use less formula than needed to make the jar last longer, resulting in many infants receiving inadequate amounts. But even if the water was boiled, and even if the formula was administered in the right proportion and in the right quantity, it is lacking in many of the nutrients and antibodies that breast milk provides. Breast milk contains the required amount of the nutrients essential for neuronal, brain and nerve, development, and to some extent, protects the baby from many diseases and potential infections. According to the International Baby Food Action Network, Nestle used unethical methods to promote their infant formula to poor mothers in developing countries. But it gets even worse. Baby Food Action Network claims that Nestle distributes free formula samples to hospitals and maternity wards. After leaving the hospital, the formula is no longer free, but because the supplementation has interfered with lactation, the family must continue to buy the formula. Health experts were concerned from the very start. It's been known for quite a while that bottle-feeding infants in impoverished tropical environments, with limited sanitation and refrigeration, can be a recipe for disaster. But Nestle's asked that critics should focus on doing something to improve unsafe water supplies, which contributed to the health problems associated with bottle-feeding. They also later used this approach to promote their bottled water, using their huge marketing budget to influence people's behavior, while avoiding denying any direct responsibility. More recently, the company has also been under head for a study on breast milk substitutes in India.
India's Apex Medical Research Authority asked the company to stop paying study participants, which included pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. It's not clear how many lives that were lost directly and indirectly due to this aggressive marketing campaign, and of course, Nestle does not claim responsibility for these tragedies. But it was easy for them, as it was easy for everybody to see the risks and the negative effects their formula was having, but they chose the money instead. Nestle Water Scandal Few people know it, but Nestle is actually the world's largest producer of bottled water. In fact, they're so keen on their water business, which also involves many of their other products, that they believe water isn't a universal right. In Habitat reports that the company has been sourcing its water from the San Bernardino National Forest without a permit and they've been recently been bumped to the front of the queue for permit renewal which will take around 18 months, and they can keep working in the meantime as long as they pay a laughable $524 annual fee. Also, California doesn't know how much water Nestle uses, because they have no legal grounds for making the company divulge this information, and Nestle hasn't published any reports. An independent analysis puts all their water usage at 1 billion gallon a year. But other areas in the world have it even worse than California. In the small Pakistani community of Badi Dilwan, a former village councillor says children are being sickened by filthy water. Who's to blame? He says it's bottled water maker Nestle, which dug a deep well that is depriving locals of potable water. Indeed, unsustainable usage of aquifer water can lead to a significant decrease in water levels, and can even exhaust the aquifer. That's right, underground water isn't the inexhaustible source many people believe it to be. In the case of Badi Dilwan, people are getting sick because if the community had fresh water piped in, it would deprive Nestle of its money source, bottled water under the Pure Life brand. Greedily using natural resources for profits? But when Nestle isn't trying to privatize water or use it without regards to the environment, it's simply bottling, tap water. A Chicago-based business has sued the company, again, claiming that the five-gallon jugs of ice mountain water they bought were nothing else than tap water. It may come as a shock to you, but nearly half of the bottled water in pet plastic bottles is actually from a tap, though Nestle never advertised this. Twelve years ago Nestle Waters was sued over allegation of false labeling, and ultimately settled for $10 million in charitable contributions and discounts. More recently, Nestle expressed their concern to the city of Flint, Michigan, which was undergoing a massive water crisis at the time, a crisis which still takes a toll to this day. Meanwhile, the company was using nearby water reserves for their own bottled water products. Nestle was bottling hundreds of thousands of bottles, paying only $200 to use this natural reserve. Child labor Most people love chocolate, but few know the dirty deals behind chocolate production. The 2010 documentary The Dark Side of Chocolate brought attention to purchases of cocoa beans from Ivorian plantations that use child slave labor. The children are usually 12 to 15 years old, and some are trafficked from nearby countries, and Nestle is no stranger to this practice. In 2005, the cocoa industry was, for the first time, under the spotlight. The International Labor Rights Fund filed a lawsuit against Nestle, among others, on behalf of three Malian children. The suit alleged the children were trafficked to Côte d'Ivoire, forced into slavery, and experienced frequent beatings on a cocoa plantation. In 2010, the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California determined corporations cannot be held liable for violations of international law and dismissed the suit, a controversial decision which has since been appealed. But even if Nestle wasn't legally liable for these abuses, they are, at least morally. But that wasn't the only case of this kind. A report by an independent auditor, the Fair Labor Association, says it found multiple serious violations of the company's own supplier code. It was reported that Nestle hadn't carried out checks against child labor and abuse. Additionally, many injuries caused by machetes, which are used to harvest cocoa pods, have been reported. Nestle's excuse can be summed up broadly as, everybody does it.
the use of child labor in our cocoa supply chain goes against everything we stand for, says Nestle's Executive Vice President for Operations Jose Lopez. No company sourcing cocoa from the Ivory Coast can guarantee that it doesn't happen, but we can say that tackling child labor is a top priority for our company. Health Threats In July 2009, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, warned consumers to avoid eating any varieties of prepackaged Nestle Toll House refrigerated cookie dough due to risk of contamination with E. coli, a foodborne bacterium that causes illness. In the U.S., it caused sickness in more than 50 people in 30 states, half of whom required hospitalization. In particular, one woman had a fatal infection before the batch was reclaimed. But this is just a minor incident compared to the 2008 Chinese milk scandal. Six infants were killed and 860 were hospitalized with kidney problems after Nestle products were contaminated with melamine, a substance sometimes illegally added to food products to increase their apparent protein content. In October 2008, Taiwan Health Ministry announced that six types of milk powders produced in China by Nestle contained low-level traces of melamine and were removed from the shelves. The scandal quickly escalated, with China reporting over 300,000 victims, raising concerns about the security of major food companies operating in China. Two people were executed and several life prison sentences were issued with the World Health Organization referring to the incident as one of the largest food safety events it has had to deal with in recent years. Nestle denied implication and claimed that all its products are clean, but the Taiwan government linked their products to toxic melamine. As a response, Nestle says it has sent 20 specialists from Switzerland to five of its Chinese plants to strengthen chemical testing. Pollution As with any, respectable, large company, Nestle has been involved in several incidents regarding pollution. A 1997 report found that in the UK, over a 12-month period, water pollution limits were breached 2,152 times in 830 locations by companies that included Cabdery and Nestle. But again, the situation in China was much worse. While people in the U.S. and Europe are slowly becoming more environmentally concerned and some are opting for more sustainable sources of water, Nestle has moved to another market, Asia. Alongside companies such as Kraft or Shell, Nestle made several environmental violations. Nestle sources Shanghai Limited's bottled water manufacturing plant also made the list for starting operation before its wastewater treatment facilities had passed an environmental impact assessment. Another article claims that Nestle capitalizes on China's already polluted waters to make a good profit, while Corporate Watch highlights the fact that Nestle continues to extract water illegally from Brazil for their Perrier brand. Although Nestle lost the legal action, pumping continues as it gets through the appeal procedures, something which can take 10 years or more. Ethiopian debt Ethiopia was going through a nationwide famine. In 2002, Nestle made what turned out to be a colossal error, demanding that Ethiopia pay them back a debt of US$6 million. United States dollars. There's nothing wrong with that per se, if Ethiopia wasn't facing extreme famine at the time. For a company that has 29 brands that make over $1 billion a year, asking a famine-stricken country to pay you back US$6 million seems questionable, to say the least. Nestle's claim dates back to the 1970s when the military regime in Addis Ababa seized the assets of foreign companies. A deal with Mugabe. Striking dubious partnerships to make a profit seems to be a recurring theme. The Swiss multinational made a deal with the wife of the infamous dictator from Zimbabwe Robert Mugabe buying 1 million liter of milk a year from a farm seized from its rightful owners by Grace Mugabe. Grace has taken over at least six of Zimbabwe's most valuable white-owned farms since 2002, building a farming empire from illegally confiscated farms, which led to an international boycott, as well as EU and US sanctions. She is known for her ridiculously lavish lifestyle, which includes overseeing the construction of two luxuriant castles. 
In 2014, she was given a doctorate diploma only three months after signing up for the program. Nestle went forward with the deal though, even as the country's agriculture-based economy was collapsing and inflation was reaching unheard of levels. Price fixing. In Canada, the Competition Bureau raided the offices of Nestle Canada, along with those of Hershey Canada Inc. and Mars Canada Inc., in an investigation on price fixing. Nestle and the other companies were subject to class action lawsuits and ultimately settled for $9 million, without actually admitting liability. Furthermore, former president and chief executive officer of Nestle Canada is facing criminal charges. But while Nestle's labels aren't simply misleading, they have also been downright false. Promoting unhealthy food and mislabeling. That Nestle is promoting unhealthy food should come as no surprise, but the level at which they operate it is simply staggering. A recent report by the UK Consumers Association claims that 7 out of the 15 breakfast cereals with the highest levels of sugar, fat, and salt were Nestle products. But while Nestle's labels aren't simply misleading, they have also been downright false. In November 2002, police ordered Nestle Columbia to decommission 200 tons of imported powdered milk, because they were falsely relabeled, not only as a different, local brand, but also with a different production date. Nestle bringing old powdered milk from a different country and labeling as local and new is not only unethical and illegal, but it poses health hazards for consumers. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you'll be notified when we upload new content, and it helps us to grow our community and create more valuable content for you. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment down below letting us know what you thought of this video. And if you know someone who could benefit from this content, please share it with them. Thank you again for your support, and we'll see you in the next video.